In this video, we're going to build a Jamboard together step by step. And the one I'm going to walk you through is a fun activity for corners. Um, the idea of it is that students will be prompted to take a post-it note, put their name or initials on it, and move that to answer A, B, C, or D as you read a question. Some of you may remember playing this in person where students would move to different parts of a room to show um, what answer they're choosing or their response. So let's get started. In the last two videos, we set up our jam and we've already given it a title and checked our shared permissions. So if you did not do that, please see the first video in this for setting up your jam. So let's go through some of the tools. Up here at the top, it says background. Once you click on background, you're going to see that there are some limited options right now, including graph paper. We're going to choose to use the chalkboard. I kind of like this one because it really makes those colors pop. Now, the pen feature. It's not something we're going to use for this Jamboard, but please know that you have a pen, you have a marker, you have a highlighter, and you have a brush. And these are the six colors that you will see over and over again in Google Jamboard. So should you want to try any of these, especially when you're presenting this, you can quickly, um, simply click on one, choose the color, and go ahead and use it to make whatever notes you need on the Jamboard. I'm just going to clear it all off by clicking Clear Frame. The next thing that we have is an eraser tool. So of course, if you don't wanna clear the whole thing and you wrote on this and you would like to erase part of it, this is actually showing you the brush it's actually my favorite way to do highlighting. I find this to be a better tool than the highlighter. I'm going to just choose the eraser and I can erase parts of it. Okay, I'm gonna clear the frame. Where we're going to start, those two tools we will not be using in this demo. We're going to start with four sticky notes and that's going to give us our A, B, C, and D blocks. So you're going to click on sticky note choose one of four colors that we're going to use and just put a letter a hit save now that's made our first sticky note let's make all four since we're in here and save time i'm going to choose my next color pick b click save choose my next color c and save and you guessed it, my last color, B, save. Now, I don't want to add any more sticky notes. So to let Google know I'm done, I'm just simply going to click cancel. Cancel just means I'm canceling this tool. There are my sticky notes. Now, of course, I could just put them in each corner, but I want them to take up most of the size of the corner. So I'm going to move it around by grabbing and holding the middle. We call this dragging and dropping. To make it bigger, once it's in that corner, I can grab and drag. And this is pretty forgiving. So you'll notice that as you move it out of the frame, it will disappear. So I'm going to just eyeball this to try to make sure that I'm going to get some even corners here. But I wanted you to see resize. You could grab either corner and shrink it up or make it grow. I'm going to grab my next one. And hopefully you're joining in at this point. You're going to eyeball it. Remember, you could always move it around. Here's my next one. And of course, if you would rather resize like this, I this is going to turn your square. So I can't really resize from here. You'll notice when I grab it, it just turns it. So instead, I'm going to put this in the corner. And this is pretty basic. So, you know, if you wanted to resize one like right there and just pick it up and move it, you can do whatever makes you happy. 
you know, there's always want more than one way to do something, particularly in Google products. So feel free to tinker with things and whatever works for you is the way you should do it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the post-it note feature. And remember, you're going to prompt your students to open a sticky note and put their initials, their name, whatever way you want them to move their um, indicator between the four corners of this, okay? Now, the next thing, you can add images. So from this menu, I'm going to choose add image. And I can upload something from my computer, but or Drive, or my Google Photos. But I always like to just try to find things online. So I'm going to type in thinking clip art. I always like to put the word clip art in my search to try to get something that is not photo based. Here's the one that I'm going to use and I'm going to put it right in the middle. All right, here we go. Let's see, I think I'm gonna make it about that big. We're going to make sure that we're able to move and maneuver these things by the end of this video. So I'm gonna put that there. Let me remind you, you know, we are going to have to make some modifications, but there's a rhyme and a reason to why I'm going in this order. Next thing, if I click this, two, four, six, eight shapes will appear. I'm going to choose the diamond. And once you pick the diamond, you can drag and drop it. That allows you to size it and shape it as you go. Uh-oh, I just covered my guy. I did that on purpose. I wanted to show you another basic tool. I would like you to see up at the top that before I move this, I can change the line color to another color to highlight it. I'm going to leave mine black. I can choose to change the fill color, even making it transparent. And there's that guy that I accidentally hid. So let me show you how to fix that if that happens to you. We're going to arrange it by changing the order of the shape or picture or post-it note. Anything you add to this jam, you can layer it. So you're going to click on the three dots, choose the word order. And in this case, I want to send it to the back. There he is. Okay, now maybe I wanted those to be covering this. Not a problem. I can go to order and let me hit bring forward. So what that's gonna do, and you're going to notice that it changes as I go, it's going to start going through each of the layers and I'm gonna stop before I get to that guy. So there it is. Now it's covered the A, it's in front of the A, the B, the C, and the D sticky note. Okay, so that's ordering things. Could I have clicked on this guy instead and brought him to the front? Sure, but why do things the easy way? <laughs> the last tool, adding a text box. Exactly what it sounds, you're going to click, then you're going to be able to click around where you want it and type. So we're going to call this four corners. Now, just like with every other element that we've added, we can grab this corner and rearrange. We could also send it backwards. All right, right now it's in the front. So if it was blocking something or blocked by something, if we need to go back and change the words, we would hit edit. But I do wanna bring your attention to the tool menu that popped up at the top. So now Google's looking at that text. I can change it to a display and that's instantly going to make it bigger for me. I can change the color. I think I'm gonna change it to red and I can change the alignment. I'm gonna change it to centered. Now again, you're only going to see this toolbar appear when you're on the tool that it matches. So watch this change. I'm on a text box now and I know Google's looking at it because there's a blue box. If I were to click on my image that I inserted, that goes away. There isn't a toolbar for that image. 
Let me click on the shape. Look at the toolbar change. Now I can change the outline. I can also change the background color. That is a very quick overview of creating the slide. Please remember if you would like to make duplicates of this slide, maybe you want to ask a different question and capture where each student placed their post-it notes, you can simply go to the frame, click on the three dots for the drop-down menu and hit duplicate. You can do this as many times as you would like. This is also a great way to give one frame to each of your students to work on if this were not a collaborative project. So if you wanted each student to have their own, um, maybe not for this activity, you could create one and put a little post-it note on there so the students know who belongs to who. I hope this very basic video gets you going in learning the tools that you can use to start creating your own jams. In the final video, I'm going to show you the very basic way of sharing this now in a Google Meet so that you can get this rolling with your virtual and distance learning.